Good day, people of the internet. My name is Irish Dog, and this is Guild Wars 2, my ranger build. This build is mainly PvE oriented, but it has gotten good results in PvP and World vs. World, so I'll show you that near the end of the video. If you're looking for a specific section for this video, check in the description, it should be there. The role of this video, role of this video, role of this build is to be mainly DPS oriented with some survivability. So you're going to be stacking on Condies as part of your DPS, so that will be lots of bleeds and vulnerabilities. Going right into the traits, we're going a 6-5-3 build. In Wilderness Survival, we'll have the first one, Natural Vigor, which gives you 25% Endurance Regeneration. The fourth trait, which is Vigor Renewal, Vigorous Renewal, which means when you activate your heal skill, you'll get a boon of Vigor. Next trait is Companion's Defense, which you and your pet gain protection when you dodge which is helpful if you accidentally dodge into an enemy's attack. Uh, skirmish. First one, Tailwind, gains swiftness when swapping weapons in combat. I'll show you an important feature later on in the video. Uh, second trait of Skirmish is Sharpened Edges, which gives you the chance when you critical hit to put on a stack of bleed, or a tick of bleed, or whatever you would want to call it. Very helpful, very oriented for this build. Next thing is Gain Fury when you weapon swap. I'll show you also how to get that in combat. There's a very fun way to do it. Next trait is reduced recharge on shortbow and longbow skills. Longbow is key to this build. This is necessary. Next trait is deal more damage when flanking. This is helpful. Your pet's usually drawing aggro, so just go behind your boss or your creature and just hit it from the back with skills. You will take it down in no time. Uh, marksmanship. Opening strike. Opening strike is an ability that gives you 5% well, no, it puts on 5 ticks of vulnerability with your first strike in combat. Uh, the next trait is Keen Edge. Keen Edge. At, when the enemy hits below 75% health, you will automatically put the boon on of Sharpening Stone, which puts on 5 st ticks of bleed. Very helpful, you don't need to think about anything, and bleed affects everything in the game, including ghosts for some reason. Alpha training. Your pet gets opening strike. This means now when you enter combat, 10 ticks of vulnerability go on your enemy. Very helpful. Next trait, Eagle Eye. Increases the longbow and harpoon gun range. Uh, longbow and harpoon damage is also increased. Very helpful. Also key to this build. Next trait, Precision Precise Strike. Opening strike always critical hits. This means you can have the chance of applying bleeds with your opening hits because of our trait as well as a sigil later on, but we'll get to that. Next trait is piercing arrows, which means arrows go through enemies, which means if you have a line of people going, you can apply bleed to each one of those people for each arrow it goes through. Um, if you're facing a boss or very low amount of mobs, run Spother. Spother gives all allies and you 150 points of precision increase. This is helpful because if you're facing just one person, and not a whole group of people, you would want this instead of piercing arrows. Moving on to equipment. The headpiece is magi, the shoulders are magi, the chest piece is soldiers, the hands are soldiers, the pants are rabbit, and the boots are magi. The bow is a carry-on bow, the sword is a berserker, a zerker sword, great sword if you can't tell, uh, amulet is zerker, the rings are both Rampagers, the accessories are both Zerkers, and the back piece is also Zerker. For underwater combat, you want a spear gun that's Rampagers. I don't have one, because I am lazy. The spear, you want Zerker, just like your greatsword. For runes, I run Rune of the Ranger, because I have a pet, and the pet's almost always active, so that's increased damage. Also, they're cheaper than Runes of the Eagle, and you can craft them. So that's easy to acquire. Uh, on, your, on the longbow, I have Superior Sigil of Frailty, which means 50% on hit will inflict vulnerability, which means even more of that can stack, which is always nice. Then, Superior Sigil of Earth, 60% chance on critical to inflict bleed. As you can see, lots of bleeds will be inflicting. On the Greatsword, we have Superior Sigil of Doom. Your next attack on swap to this weapon while in combat, inflicts poison. And, superior sigil of air, 50% chance on critical hit to cause lightning strike. 
Both of these are helpful. It allows you to spike down the enemy in close quarters. Uh, moving on to skills. I always run heal as one. This thing has the best healing to recharge rate. Troll Unjoint might have more healing, but it's over time, so you might be spiked down by enemies before that happens. Uh, then we have Lightning Reflexes. Always have this on. It's a quick uh, like disengagement from combat. Deals damage, applies vigor, removes immobilizing condition, which is nice. Breaks stun. It's a must-have for a ranger. Uh, for the next one, uh, Signet of Renewal. This is if you want to be slightly more tanky in combat. It will remove conditions, and you can pull conditions from allies that go straight to your pet, as well as pull conditions from yourself. Break stun, that's helpful. But if you want to do more damage, I would say Quickening Zephyr is your thing. This will increase the amount of skills and actions uh, move faster. Also break stun. Only do this if you want to do more damage, otherwise just have the Signet on. Uh, for 9, also a must-have, Signet of the Wild. Gain health regeneration to you and your pet. This will make it so you don't always need to rely on your heal scale, and you can stay outside of combat. I don't often pop this one, but it's there if you want any stability or more damage for your pet. The last one is Rampage's 1. You gain Fury, Stability, Swiftness, as well as every time you and your pet attack, you both gain Might. Very helpful, and it's just great to put bosses down, especially if you're running Quickening Zephyr, and then you use the arrows to just get lots of Might on you. Uh, we'll move over to the pets. I like to run with a Fern Hound. The Fern Hound's ability allows regeneration on it, you, and your party. Very helpful to keep people up. And then skills, yeah, it does that stuff. Next pet is a Whiptail Devourer. It applies poison as well as a ranged poison. Does range, it applies poison, as well as it evades backwards, so this pet's gonna last longer than your Fern Hound will. In the water, I like to run a Rainbow Jellyfish as my pet. This is my main pet. has a really good AoE that applies chill to enemies underwater, as well as damage output. Very nice. Also, I like it for the joke. Then my other pet is a Shark. Its skill that you pop is, is Quickness, Frenzy, and Bleeding, so it stacks on the Bleeding underwater that your Harpoon does a lot of anyway, so that's very nice. Uh, underwater, the 7 and 9... Keep it the same on land. Your skill 8 can be anything you want underwater. That's how I run it. Now, well, just so you guys can see what I'm actually wearing. For my wardrobe, I have on a Marauder's Helm for the head. Uh, shoulders, I don't have them equipped, but they are Rubicon shoulder pads. For the chest piece, I have Rascal Coat. That's that. For the gloves, I have Prowler Gloves. For the pants, I have on the Rubicon pants, I think. Yep, Rubicon leggings. As well as the boots are Rubicon boots. Then the blade is an Ebon Blade skin. And my longbow is a Gandravina skin. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, for dyes, I have peanut butter, rust, midnight olive, ebony, and Dijon, and you can see where they're fitting on my outfits. Okay, let's head over to PvP. And now we wait for the loading screen. Okay. So here in PvP, traits are all the same, the pets are the same, the skills are the same. Only thing that changes is instead of having your greatsword here, I instead run with a sword and axe. The sword allows for mobility, which is very nice as well as a little might, but mainly mobility. Plus the axe allows you to deflect projectiles, which is very nice. Uh, with this, you just want to snipe people and just contest points as much as you want, and then keep people away from objectives, hold them, um, quickly burst into them, applying conditions, then getting out of there. But the actual equipment. The sigils and the rune stays the same, so you have the rune of ranger. The amulet is a zerker amulet, but the runes, not the runes, the sigil on the bow, I have the sigil of earth, which applies the bleeds. Sigil of intelligence, which allows you to instantly get your three hits on the enemy for critical chance. 100% critical chance, the three hits from your bow, 
that's very good. That's going to apply bleeds right away. Keep them contested. On the sword, we have a Sigil of Fire, because you're going to be in close range. You might as well just have an AoE Fire Burst. Then I have Sigil of Doom, because once you get poisoned on someone, they have reduced healing. Very nice. But we're going to head back to the overworld. Well, Tyria. And I'll show you some other things. Loading screen again. Okay. So, as you could have seen, for food, I would say you go bowls of curry butternut squash. Gives you precision, gives you ferocity. That means it can do more damage. As well as run maintenance oils. Maintenance oils increase your precision from your toughness and vitality, which are kind of decently high, so you're going to get a bunch of precision off of that. But the unusual bits for this build is have some kind of equipment bundle item. I carry around the birthday cake launcher because it's always there. I can supply people with boons, which is nice. But in the middle of combat, you can run around and say you're in the middle of combat. You can pop it, gain your swiftness and fury from your traits, gain that, pop back out of the birthday blaster, back into your weapon, and now you have a boon of fury to do more damage. Another thing that's really cool that I found was, say, my Fernhound, which is my first pet. She dies, then I have to go to my Whiptail. I now have to wait a minute till I can get my Fernhound out again. Unless you use these Remnant Tonics, crafted by Artificers, and also are really cheap on the trading post. Only, yeah, a couple copper. They're very cheap. So what happens is, as I was saying, say my Fernhound dies. I have to pull out my Whiptail and wait a minute for my Fernhound to come out again. Unless, while my fern Fernhound is on recharge, I pop one of these, then I pop out. My Fernhound is now back in the fight, fully healed and no cooldown to use. Very helpful in boss fights. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. Like, comment, subscribe, hit me up on the Twitters, and have a day.